was born young reading, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Chapter One, as white as snow. One winter's day, a young queen stood sewing by her window, as she watched the feathery snowflakes fall. Her needle slipped. Three drops of ruby red blood fell onto the snow. The queen sighed. I wish I had a child, she said, with skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony wood. Her wish came true. The queen's daughter had skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony. The king was delighted and named her Snow White. But his joy was mixed with the misery, for the young queen died. My child needs a mother, he thought. Within a year, he had married again. His new wife was proud and vain. Her heart was so full of love for herself, she had none for anyone else. The only thing she wanted was to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Morning and night. She gazed into her magic mirror and asked the same question: "Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of us all?" And morning and night, the mirror replied, "You are." The new queen paid no attention to Snow White, who grew more lovely every day. Then one dreadful morning, the queen asked, "Mirror, mirror on the wall." Who's the fairest of us all? And the mirror said, "Actually, it's Snow White." The queen went pink with rage, and her beautiful face scowled into the mirror. "I won't have it," she snarled. Whenever the queen asked her question, the mirror gave the same reply. Finally, she could bear it no longer. Snow White must die. She decided. Chapter Two, A Deadly Plan. The queen called for the royal huntsman, her heart bursting with jealousy. Take Snow White to the forest and kill her, she ordered. I can't stand her near me. Bring me back her lungs and liver, so I know she is dead. The huntsman was horrified, but he had to obey. Snow White chatted happily as they went into the forest. The huntsman didn't say a word. Under a giant oak tree, he took out a knife and pulled her from her horse. "What are you doing?" she shouted in alarm. "Queen's orders," said the huntsman sadly. "She wants me to kill you." "What?" cried Snow White. "No, please." Let me go," she begged. Her dark eyes filled with tears, and the huntsman took pity on her. As he stood there, he spotted a wild pig in the distance. "I'll take its lungs and liver to the queen," he thought, "and Snow White will be safe." He turned to Snow White. "Run then," he said, "but never return to the palace." Chapter Three. Deep in the forest, Snow White ran past twisted trees and scratchy brambles. Soon her black hair was tangled with leaves. She ran until the sun sank and the forest grew dark. Thorny branches, like witches' fingers, reached out to catch her. Still, she ran. She ran until her legs could barely hold her, and then. She saw a cottage. Maybe someone here can help me, she thought. To her dismay, there was no one home. She leaned against the door to catch her breath, and it swung open. Snow White tumbled inside. The first thing she saw was a tiny table and seven tiny chairs. Snow White smelled fresh bread and honey, and her mouth watered. After running all day, she was starving. Sitting down, 
She helped herself to bread and honey and drank every drop of milk from all seven mugs. She put down the last mug and yawned. Running all day was exhausting. Seven tiny beds with fat pillows stood along one wall. Snow White tried bed after bed. The first was too hard, the second too narrow. By the seventh she was so tired, she curled up on it anyway. While Snow White slept, the cottage door opened and seven dwarfs trooped in. They each lit a candle and looked around in surprise. Who's been in our cottage? Who's been sitting on my chair? Who drank my milk? Who ate my bread? Who ate my honey? Who tried my bed? Who's on my bed? Quietly, they gathered around Snow White and watched her sleeping. Her hair's as black as ebony. Her skin's as white as snow. Her lips are as red as blood. She's beautiful. They all sighed together. Next morning, Snow White was woken by seven songs sung very badly. She jumped out of bed in a panic, but the dwarfs were so friendly she forgot to be afraid. When she told them about the queen, the dwarfs were disgusted. Stay here, they said. We'll take care of you. Chapter 4 Pretty Silks to Sell In her palace bedroom, the queen was singing too. Smiling at her reflection, she asked her usual question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of us all? Well, queen, you are fair, no doubt about it, the mirror said chattily. But Snow White is fairer. She's living in a cottage in the forest, it added. Snow White is alive? The queen spat in fury. The huntsman tricked me. She was so angry, she couldn't eat or sleep. Instead, she spent every second plotting how to kill Snow White. At last, she disguised herself as an old peddler. Packing a basket with ribbons and silks, she set off for the forest. Snow White was cleaning the cottage when an old woman came to the door. Pretty things to sell, the woman cackled. Silks and satines, belts and bows. What lovely silks, cried Snow White, stroking a belt. Here, my dear, said the old woman. Try it on. She looped the belt around Snow White's waist and pulled it tight, tighter and tighter. Stop! Ha! I'll be the fairest soon! The woman kept pulling until Snow White collapsed. The dwarfs came home to find Snow White lying in the doorway. Shocked, they saw the belt squeezing the life out of her. Whipping out a knife, one of the dwarfs sliced through it. Snow White spluttered and began to breathe again. Where's the old peddler woman? She gasped. What old woman? A dwarf began. No one knows we're here. He gave a sudden shout. Hey, it must have been the wicked queen. She tricked you. The dwarfs looked serious. You're in grave danger, said one. The queen will keep trying to kill you, said another. Don't open the door, they all said together. Meanwhile, the wicked queen had run all the way home and raced to her mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of us all? Sit down, your majesty. It's still Snow White. The next day, the queen was back at the cottage with a poison comb. But Snow White refused to let her in. You can look, can't you? said the queen, holding the sparkly comb to the window. Snow White was entranced. Forgetting her promise, she opened the door. Quicker than a bee, 
The queen darted inside and stuck the comb in Snow White's hair. The poison worked at once and she fell to the floor. As soon as the dwarfs saw Snow White, they knew the queen had returned. Look what she's done now, said one, taking out the comb. Snow White moaned. Oh, my head! You must be more careful, the dwarfs warned her. The queen will try again. Don't open the door! Chapter 5 The Magic Apple Before you ask, it's still Snow White. At the palace, the queen's heart was eaten up with envy. She hated being the second fairest. Angrily, she set to work on her worst spell yet. In a secret room, the queen made a magic apple. It looked so delicious, whoever saw it would have to eat it. But she dipped one half in poison. Then she dressed up as a farmer's wife and went to the cottage once more. I won't buy anything, Snow White called out to her. And I mustn't open the door. I'm not selling, said the queen quickly. I just thought you'd like to share this apple. She held out a shiny red apple. Hmm, very juicy, she added. She took a large bite out of one side and licked her lips. Here, try it. It does look good, agreed Snow White and took a bite too. That instant, she fell to the ground in a crumpled heap. The queen laughed. White as snow, red as blood, black as wood, and dead as dead. At last, I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. Chapter 6 A Prince Rides By Not again! groaned a dwarf when he saw Snow White sprawled on the floor. But this time, they couldn't help her. No belt, no comb, she's dead. She's so beautiful, sobbed the youngest dwarf. We can't bury her. So they laid her in a glass coffin and wrote the Princess Snow White upon it. They placed the coffin on a nearby hill and took turns keeping watch. Snow White had been there for over a year when a prince rode by. He saw her skin as white as snow, her lips as red as blood, and her hair as black as ebony, and he fell in love. Leaping from his horse, he knelt by the coffin. She's beautiful, he said to the dwarf guarding her. Please let me take her to my palace. What? No! I want to build a splendid tomb for her, said the prince. A princess belongs in a palace. The dwarfs argued with the prince all day, but by sunset, they agreed. Almost at once he was back with servants to carry the coffin. As they lifted it, one tripped. The coffin slipped and the apple flew from Snow White's mouth. To their astonishment, she opened her eyes. The prince was overjoyed. He flung open the coffin, swept her up and carried her to his horse. Where am I? Who are you? I'm a prince who wants to marry you. Meanwhile, the queen was going back to her mirror. Snow White is fairest. Ask me another, said the mirror saucily before she could speak. With a furious cry, the queen smashed her mirror into a thousand pieces, and a thousand glass splinters chorused, Snow White is still the fairest of them all.